Good morning. Just finishing up drying my hands. I had a mango for breakfast. It's mango season here in St. Kitts, and I didn't want my hands to be sticky, and I wanted to make sure they were completely dry before I picked up this to read you a story. It's titled, If an Octopus Lived in Your House. It's by Margot Anderson. She's the author. She wrote the book. And it's illustrated by Dale Dawkins. And he drew all the pictures that are inside. Do you think that the octopus that's going to come visit them is pink? What would you think if you met Mrs. Pink? Chapter one. If an octopus lived in your house, what would she do? Would she play with you? Would she swim in your pool? And if you don't have a pool, would she go in the bathtub? Would she want to go under the sprinkler or play under the hose pipe? Would you set up a seawater bin for her? Would she help your mama make lunch and do the laundry too? What do you think she would do? Hmm. I'll tell you the story of our octopus who came to visit and stayed for the whole day. What? Chapter two, where am I? One hot summer day after the end of school, Mama took all five of us, Gretchen, Barbie, Danny, Amanda, and Harry out to our pool. We were about to jump in and swim when we saw something very strange. Look, Mama, what's swimming in our pool? What do you think swimming in their pool? Oh, that's just an octopus. Maybe it wants to play. But mama, how did it get into our pool? I don't know, let's see what it has to say. Hey, Mr. Octopus, how did you get here? First, I am Mrs. Pink. And second, I got lost. I was escaping from the aquarium down the street. I was trying to get back to the ocean to see my babies and landed up here. Where am I? You are at our house. We live right near the ocean. It is just on the other side of those rocks. Can you stay and play and tell us more? We have never known an octopus before. And I can tell you I have never known humans, at least none I liked. I got caught by some people and put in a huge fish tank and taken to the aquarium. I can stay for a while, then I must get back to the sea. Because that's where octopuses belong, are in the sea. You have so many arms, six more than me. Six more than me. So we have two, right? We have two arms. And they, and she has six more. So six plus two is, you got it, eight. So the octopus has eight arms. What do you do with all of those eight arms? Come, get in the pool with me and I will show you. So Gretchen and Barbie and Danny and Amanda and even Harry, the youngest, jumped in the pool. Mrs. Pink put Harry on her back and picked the other kids up and swam them all around the pool. Smiling, she assured them they would come to no harm. We, they said, 
They giggled and splashed and said, this is fun. Then Mrs. Pink had them all climb on her back and jump in the water. She picked them up with her arms and let them jump as high as they could. The water in the pool went splish and splash. They were having so much fun that they didn't realize what time it was until their mama said, okay kids, it's time for lunch. So here in the Caribbean region, we don't usually use kids to refer to children, do we? Um, kids is actually just used for what? What do we call kids? Baby goats? Yeah, you know, baby goats are called kids. But in the United States, where the author is from, they refer to children as kids. So. We don't want to stop playing with Mrs. Pink. Can she come and have lunch with us? I am quite hungry, said Mrs. Pink. Do you have tuna fish? Yes, lots, said Mama. Do you want it in a bowl or on a dish? So they all went in for lunch. What do you normally have for lunch? Sometimes I have soup. Sometimes I have a sandwich. Um, what's your favorite? There's bread and cheese. There's hmm, sometimes cook up or leftovers from dinner from the night before. Hmm. Can I help you? Chapter three. Can I help you? Asked Mrs. Pink. I have many arms and I can help with lots of things at once. Oh, wonderful, said Mama. Let's see. The bread is on the counter. The tuna fish is in the pantry. There's peanut butter and jelly next to the tuna fish. There are ketchup and mayonnaise and mustard in the fridge. Also cheese and ham slices and tomatoes and milk and green grapes and carrot sticks. Now, what did I forget? Do you think she forgot anything? That's a lot of food, but I guess there's a lot of them. There's five plus Mrs. Pink plus Mama. Wow, how much does that make? Five plus Mama plus Mrs. Pink. Five, six, seven. Ooh, there's seven people to feed. My goodness. As quick as a wink, Mrs. Pink had all the ingredients for sandwiches right under Mama's nose. Mama didn't wa need to walk around in circles trying to gather everything together. In another hand, Mrs. Pink had a bunch of plates and glasses, and then she was making all the sandwiches at once, and suddenly the entire lunch was ready, and it had taken no time at all because more hands make light work. Hmm. Oh my goodness, said Mama. You are such a help. Please eat something yourself. So Mrs. Pink gobbled down three cans of tuna fish. No plate or bun needed. After lunch, it started to rain, so the kids all needed to stay inside. Hmm. Chapter four. Just as the kids were about to play a game of hide and go seek with Mrs. Pink, the phone rang. Mrs. Pink, can you watch the kids while I answer the phone? Of course, said Mrs. Pink, who was enjoying her time in this house. They all went down to the playroom, and the first thing that happened, Harry fell off his tricycle while he was trying to zoom around in circles with a popsicle in his hand. Mrs. Pink reached out and helped him back on the bike but a band-aid and put a band-aid on his knee. Luckily, it was just a band-aid that he needed on his knee. It's never really good to walk around with a popsicle stick in your mouth, run or play, because you can really hurt the inside of your mouth or choke on it. But also, what is usually on a popsicle stick? Sticky stuff. And it drips everywhere, right? Hmm, not nice to clean up after. At the same time, Amanda was busy with a purple crayon scribbling on the wall. With another arm, Mrs. Pink took the crayons away from Amanda and sponged off the wall. Danny found his new baseball and was bouncing it off his sister, who started to scream, no wonder. Mrs. Pink reached out and took the baseball away. 
Gretchen and Barbie had found some dress-up clothes and were parading around in Mama's high heels when Barbie slipped and banged her knee. Mrs. Pink picked, up, picked her up and found a band-aid for her knee. All this happened in five minutes. Mrs. Pink used all eight arms to keep these kids out of trouble. What kind of trouble were they getting into? What was Amanda doing again? Oh yeah, she was scribbling on a wall. Hmm, where should you actually scribble? And Danny, he found his new baseball and was bouncing it off who? Oh gosh, his sister. And actually you're not really supposed to bounce baseballs. They're quite hard. You're supposed to throw them, right? I'm not at people. And what, who else was doing something? Oh, right, Gretchen and Barbie. They had found some dress up clothes, which is really fun actually. But they were wearing high heels that might have been a little bit too big for them. Mm hmm. So they fell. Oh boy. Mama got off the phone and came down to the playroom to see what was happening. So kids, what have you been doing? Hmm. All five kids looked up and said, Mrs. Pink helped us all stay out of trouble, but we haven't played hide and seek yet. Can we play now? Well, I don't know. I have to vacuum and do laundry. Mrs. Pink was really nice. She didn't tattletale, did she? Hmm. Mrs. Pink may be able to stay for a while, but I think you have to ask her politely. I can play hide and seek and help vacuum and do the laundry too. So while Mama was trying to organize clothes and the vacuum cleaner, Mrs. Pink was sliding around the corners and hiding from the kids. Then the kids hid from Mrs. Pink. Chapter five. Mrs. Pink threw some clothes in the machine with one arm and poured in washing detergent with the other. She slid her body around the washing machine as the kids came around the corner looking for her. Before Mama could even reach for the vacuum machine, Mrs. Pink had it in one hand while she was mopping up some spilled milk with the other hand, with another hand. After she had done these errands, she let all the kids find her. She gave them rides around the house on her back. She tickled them with her long arms. Each kid had an arm all to themselves. So if each kid had an arm all to themselves, and there's five of them, how many arms did Mrs. Pink have left free? Five minus three, no, eight. Eight minus five equals three. Then she picked up eight books all at once and started reading parts of them. No, Mrs. Pink, you're supposed to only read one book at a time. So Mrs. Pink read all the kids' favorite books one at a time. There was a book about a rooster and one about a pelican, another about an iguana, and an animal book about a donkey and a goat and a dog who were best friends. There were books about seahorses from the ocean and a book about mermaids who lived on some rocks named Libby Shears, right near the kids' house. The kids were as happy as clams. Happy as clams, why do you think they call, why do you think they have this saying, happy as clams? I've heard it before. Have you heard it before? I wonder if it's because the clamshell is like a smiley face like shaped like a smiley face? Hmm, I wonder. I might look that up. Chapter six. But the day flew by and it was time for Mrs. Pink to leave. She had to get back to her babies in the sea. She knew she only had to climb over some rocks and then she would be in her real home in the ocean. The kids were all very sad to see Mrs. Pink go. And so was Mama. Mrs. Pink had been such a good help to her. They all went to the rocks with Mrs. Pink and hugged her. Mrs. Pink put all her eight arms around the kids and said, now don't forget me. Maybe I will poke my head up from the ocean from time to time and see if I can see you. 
Oh, please do, said the kids. We will be on the lookout for you. Mrs. Pink gave eight waves with her arms and slid into the sea. So now you know what could happen if an octopus came to live in your house. Wouldn't it be fun? What would you think if you met Mrs. Pink? So after reading a story, I usually like to figure out in my head what I learned from it and what I might want to know more about. But one of the things that stuck out to me straight away, I want to know if there's actually any pink octopus or, or if Mrs. Pink, well, we know she's a character, I and mean, we know this is a fictional book, so it's not real, it's, it's a story created by a person. Um, but it, I'm very curious whether or not there are some pink ones out there. Hmm. What I learned, or, well, no, I kind of already knew this, but maybe, maybe you didn't. Um, that octopuses have eight arms. That's kind of interesting. What else did I learn? I learned who the author was and who the illustrator was of this book. Oh yes, I remember. I do remember. When I go in the pool and I swim, it's very important that I have a swimming buddy and they all had Mrs. Mrs. Pink, right, as their swimming buddy. What else did we learn? Hmm. We learned that more hands helping, can I help you, is um, it makes things go faster and it's easier so we can always ask our parents or the people that are caring for us to see if we, they need any help. We learned that in the United States, they sometimes refer to children as kids and that we typically call kids, well, we call children children or pygmy in some countries in the Caribbean. Um, but kids usually refer to baby goats Baby goats or kids. What else do we learn? We learned there are certain things that we shouldn't do, right? So we shouldn't scribble on the wall, and we should definitely not bounce a baseball off of anybody. And really, we shouldn't bounce a baseball anyway. And what else did we learn? We learned that it might be better not to wear high heels or shoes that maybe are the wrong size for us because we can get hurt. Oh yes, and that we should not play with a popsicle in our hand. Why, why wouldn't we play with a popsicle in our hand? I gave two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, maybe you could hurt yourself, right, if you fell. But two, what was the second one? It's the same thing. I remember I had to wash my hands and dry them before I picked up the book. What did we learn? That's right. We don't want to get sticky stuff all over the place because then we have to clean it up after. So it's best to stay in one spot when you're, drink when you're having a popsicle, right? Especially down here. It's pretty hot, so things melt pretty quickly. Um, oh yeah, and talking about which, what else did I do? I washed my hands before I picked up this book mm -hmm. because I didn't want to get it all sticky. Not for the next person who was going to read it, right? Or for to attract ants, that would not be great. Can you imagine if you picked up a book and it had red ants all over it? Oh, that wouldn't be good. Those fire ants can do a nasty bite. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? Well, maybe you can think of some other things that you learned. And maybe you can think about some other things that you want to learn. Maybe there are some things that stood out to you today. Like, I wonder. It's like I wonder moments. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you soon again.
When you go into the sea or into a pool, or even when you go to have a bath, it's always really important to let someone know and also to have a swimming buddy if you're in the sea or in a pool. Because just in case you get a cramp or something happens, there's always gonna be someone there with you in case you need any help. 